J-Rod had, his skin was pinkish, but a little bit rough, you know, and that kind of stuff. Not, you know, not horrible looking, you know, or to me, he didn't look horrible looking. So what kind, do you know what kind of scientific advice he would give the, the, the crew that was building or back engineering these? Basically, it was only engineering advice or science advice. You know, say for example, I performed the calculation because even our guys, our people that were the top mathematicians and stuff couldn't figure some of this stuff out. So we would take it and then, you know, we'd have to, with each design, you know, there's a requirement, requirement for calculations. And we'd have to prove by calculations, you know, that this thing's gonna operate. No different than anything else we do. And sometimes you'd get into a spot where you try and try and try, and even if you use the formulas to come up with this thing that they'd provide you, it wouldn't work. And that's where he'd come in, you know, to tell him to look at this and see what we did wrong. There were certain reasons for the secrecy. I, I could understand that, no different than, um, you know, the first atomic bomb that they built. I, maybe not the way that everybody expects it, but in some manner they, they determine appropriate, you know, to show everybody, hey, look at what we got. The document I signed ends in 2003. And you're not the only one that signed. And I'm not the only one. J-Rod was one of the crash survivors and worked directly with our own government. Captain Bill Uhouse, a former Navy pilot who later worked for the U.S. Air Force performing experimental testing on aircraft, was assigned to Area 51 in the mid-1960s. And he claims that he not only studied the craft that allegedly crashed in Kingman, Arizona, but also had direct contact with J-Rod. We had a, a long period of introduction into meeting, you know, an alien. And I, I called him J-Rod. That's the name that the linguist gave him. And he'd talk, he would talk, but he'd sound just like, if you spoke, he'd sound like you. You know, he, he's like one of these, you know, a parrot, you know, but, but he'd try and answer your question, you know. Basically, it was only engineering advice or science advice. There's also another whistleblower by the name of Dan Burish. And Dan Burish said that he was hired as a microbiologist to basically care for J-Rod, ensuring that he remained healthy. And uh, this went on for years and years and years. According to Dan Burish and Bill Uhouse, J-Rod was housed in a special underground chamber at Area 51. And there have been numerous other accounts of extraterrestrials working with the United States government. There's a lot of stories that we've worked with the aliens at Area 51, or uh, some say at a base nearby, kind of in the desert out there. And we've been working with them in underground labs, and they have been sharing information for us to enhance our technologies. What they were building was a trainer for us to learn how to fly their, their craft under moon dust, under blue fly, we have recovered alien debris, not of this earth. We're talking about a highly intelligent, a highly intelligent civilization. I am prepared to state that I have been at locations where craft of, un, of unknown origin that did not originate on the face of this planet was there. I am prepared to state that while I was there, we saw living dead bodies. We have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. So look, I think we all want to know, do you think any government has recovered a crashed UAP? So what I've said for the record, uh, which is unfortunately all I, I can say, is that it is my uh, belief that the United States is in possession of, uh, of exotic material. And unfortunately, that's, that's, that's about all I can, I can say at this time.